Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Apa khabar semua? Waalaikumsalam sah. Sehat semua. Okay, today we are going to do the second derivative test. I I will just summarize the test again, and then we will look at application, right, of the second derivative test, which is chapter ten. After that, we're going to move on to the next topic that would be on the partial derivative. So hopefully, you know, we can start with the partial derivative today. Now I have uh, I have one announcement. Uh, we missed the a class last week on Monday. You know, due to some reason, I could not. Uh, make the class on Monday. So what we'll do, we'll have a makeup class on Saturday. Okay, this is to cover the class on Monday. And I know everybody has, not everybody, like many of you has class on Friday, Saturday, uh, not, not Saturday, Friday, Thursday, things like that. So I have no choice but to have a class on Saturday. Uh, on the 24th, this Saturday. And of course, the time, I think we I keep the time, same time, 10 a.m. Okay. So I hope, you know, most, most of you can uh, can make it. So that is uh, make a class to cover the class that I canceled on Monday, last week. Okay. Are there any problem with Saturday? Do you have a class? Do, anybody has class on Saturday? Okay. Yes, I, sir, I have class. Uh, what time do you have class on Saturday? Um, ten until twelve. Oh, ten, 10 until twelve. I also have class at um on Saturday. Uh, yes, I have leadership class. Is it from ten o'clock? Okay. Yes, in that case, in that case, we make it. Uh, okay now. Uh, how many people has class on Saturday 10 a.m.? How many people? About how many? I have uh, two people. Is there anybody else having class on Saturday? Uh, I have class, sir. I also have class, sir. Oh, I also have class, sir. Class. Oh, okay. In that case, you know, in that case, what we do, I will make it Saturday uh, 8 in the morning. Okay, 8 a.m. I also have class. I also have class, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I put I have class. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Oh, oh, what about what about uh what about uh the patraway? Hey, malam malam. Ada class? Ada class. Ada class. Ada class. Ada class. Ada class. Ada Ada class. Ada class. Ada class. class. Ada 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 class. On Thursday, okay, Thursday, 10 p.m. Okay. Thursday, 10 p.m. Oh, okay. uh, 10 p.m. Malam, malam. Ada kelas kat malam? What that is it? Ah, tadi kalau ada kelas kat malam, tengok lah juga ye. Nyanyi ke budak. Okay, uh, Thursday, 10 p.m. Okay, unless, you know, some people has objection to that time. I don't think so. 
Uh, by 10 o'clock, the mosque is already closed. Uh, yeah, by the time you come back, I, I don't think it's 10, uh, 10 p.m. 10 to 30. 10 to 30. Okay, in Ramadan, kita belum buat telah malam. Because, you know, you, you, you stay up longer at night. So I think 10, 10 to 30, 10 to 30. Okay, I'll, I'll try to make it uh, one and a half hours or one hour depending. But we have we have to cover that, that, that class on, on Saturday, on, on Monday. So as of now, confirm, okay, confirm Thursday, Thursday, this Thursday, what is the day? The day is uh, 22nd. Eh, not Thursday, it's Friday. Friday, it's good. Friday, it's Saturday. Because we have a class on Wednesday. Look at Thursday at the quality. So Friday, okay, so Friday. Friday, 10.30 p.m. Uh, Friday is on the 23rd. 23rd. Um, sir, um, Friday, pukul 10 malam ada kelas. Ada kelas? <laughs> Masya Allah. Uh -uh. Macam Itu, tu, sir. Huh? Macam tu kita buat kelas Sunday, Sunday ada Sunday. Ada kelas kat Sunday? Tak ada. Tak ada? Uh, kita buat Sunday lah. Okay, I don't think we are traveling because now it's PKP. So we do it on Sunday. Okay, so Sunday we maintain the time 10 a.m. Okay, we maintain the time 10 a.m. And that would that will be the last, last straw. Okay, so Sunday, 25. So you need out 25, 25th of April. 10 a.m. Okay, Sunday last not it. All right, Sunday class. And then on Monday, you have also a class. But that's fine because uh, we have a problem, uh, you know, making the schedule. Everybody is busy having classes on Saturday, Friday, tomorrow. All right. So I give you uh, some homework questions before I forget. Uh, homework question, okay, 10.1. This is on the application. I haven't given you application here. Application first derivative test. So what you do for this question, you just apply the first derivative test. 52, 53, 57. Okay, that's 10.1. Uh, 10.2, the one that we are doing now, okay, the second derivative test. Uh, we we'll like you to do uh, 9, 10, 13, 15, 16. Now, this, you only do the second derivative test. You know, sometimes the question asks you to do some other things, but you don't do anything else. Just uh, do the second derivative, derivative test for maximum and minimum. So this is the thing that I need to do today, all right? I think I started that already on Wednesday. So today I'm going to make it, you know, uh, I, will, I will do it again on the, on the principle. Uh, then we're going to do the application, all right, which is 10.3. Uh, 10.3 and 10.4. 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 okay, so yeah, so after that, so we're done with the, with the chapter. The question is 10.3, okay, oh, good. All right, now, uh, what is the second derivative test? Like I said earlier, by using the second derivative test, we can determine whether the function has a maximum or minimum uh, with relative ease. Uh, that means the, the, the test would be straightforward and it's compact and we don't have to do or, you know, to determine the intervals for which the function is increasing and so on. We'll just make use of the second derivative. So here, we're going to relate, all right? We relate the second derivative to the function, whether the function has a maximum or minimum. 
at the critical point. So that is the, the test. Okay. Uh, I hope my internet today will be okay. All right. Now the second derivative test is the following. Okay, the second derivative test. So we consider a function y equal to f of x. And of course, uh, this function is differentiable. And what you want to do first is that you find the critical point. So find the critical point. Uh, of course, we are taking the first derivative, okay, point or points, if there are more than one. Uh, that means y prime equal to f prime of x equal to zero. Now say the critical point is at uh, x zero, y zero. So we have done this, okay? First step we know already. Now, secondly, we are going to determine the, or we're going to find the second derivative. So here you get the second derivative that is y double prime equal to f double prime of x. So you take the second derivative. And then what we do here, we evaluate. Okay, you evaluate the y double prime at x zero, y zero. Okay, so here at x equal to x zero, you want to see what is the nature, okay? The nature of the y double prime. So at x, uh, at x equal to x zero, if, okay, if, the f double prime at x zero is positive, bigger than zero. Uh, what will be our conclusion? We conclude that uh, the y or the function uh, has a relative, or sometimes, you know, we don't have to say the word relative, a relative minimum at x equal to x zero. And of course, that we mean is that the point x zero, y zero. Okay, so if the f double prime at x zero is positive, bigger than zero, what does it mean? It means that the function has a minimum at that critical point. Okay, all right. So that is the, the first possibility. Now, second possibility, you may have uh, f double prime at x zero negative. Okay, are you done here? Finish? Yeah, okay. Uh, second possibility, we may have f double prime at x zero is less than zero, negative. So what is our conclusion? Y or the function has what? Has a relative maximum, right? At x zero, y zero. So the critical point is a relative maximum for the function. Or we say that the function has a relative maximum at x zero, y zero. So f double prime, okay, yeah, f double prime. Okay, f double prime negative, you have a maximum at the critical point. Now, the third possibility, you may have f double prime at x zero equal to zero. All right, so here we cannot conclude. So there is no conclusion. It, it, it won't be a maximum, it will not be a maximum. We may have an inflection point. Okay, inflection point. Now, inflection point, we are not going to cover that because if inflection point, it's not a maximum, it's not minimum, then 
it doesn't serve our purpose for application. Okay? So case number three, we don't do. We are going, we are interested only in A and B, whether you have a maximum or minimum. Okay, all right. Now, inflection point, what is inflection point? Inflection point is something like this. Uh, we, we just have an idea of how inflection point looks like. Inflection point will be something like this. It is not a maximum, it's not a minimum. It's like, it's like you know, when you go, you, you go up a mountain, you don't reach the peak, okay? You reach uh, some plateau, that means a um, uh, flat area, but after that, it is going up again. It is not going down. So it will be something like this. You have uh, the curve going up, all right? Reaching uh, some, some uh, critical point over there, okay? And then it goes up again. So here at this point, you, you have f prime equal to zero, okay? And, but f double prime is maybe, maybe equal to zero, or it is equal to, it's undefined. Okay, sometimes it's undefined. So you may have inflection point. And it can also be the other way around. The curve is going down, right? And that means you may have a minimum there, yeah? but instead of going up, the curve go down. So that is also inflection point. So that is inflection point, All right? So for more detailed inflection point, you can look at some pictures, you know? They, they draw a very good picture in 10 point, 10 point, 10 point two. Okay? So you want to see, just look at the picture, okay? Just look at some diagrams more beautiful diagram, 10.2. Uh, but this is the idea, okay? Inflection point. It's like, uh, it, it's not a maximum, all right? It, it look at it from the one side, it look like a maximum, but from the other side, it is not, okay? Because the curve keep on going up or the curve keep on going down. All right, okay. So that is possibility number three which we are not interested in. So let's look at uh, one or two examples of the second derivative test. So let's consider a simple example. Uh, number one, let's say uh, we have y equal to x squared plus 5x minus, minus, minus nine. So we have a quadratic function and we know how it looked already, right, from the first derivative test. But now, you know, we want to show the same thing by making use of the second derivative test. So here, you, you, you find uh, or determine whether, uh, I think maybe determine whether the function has a relative uh, maximum or minimum. Right, and then sketch the graph. So what you do, uh, number one, you get the critical critical point. Okay, find the critical point. Uh, that means oh, y prime is equal to zero. So what is y prime? Y prime is equal to two x plus five. All right, set that to zero. Two x plus five equal to zero for critical point, uh, then what you have would be uh, 2x. I think what we should do, not, 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 I don't know, y prime. Okay, set y prime equal to zero for critical point. Uh, then what you have is 2x plus five equal zero. X is equal to negative five over two. That is negative. 2.5. So that is our critical value of x. So what you do now, find y. Okay, uh, we, we call that x0. Okay, critical point x0. So you need to find y0 or just say y is okay also, no? So you find y0, okay, equal to something. 
substitute into the original function. So you find the value of y, which is y zero. So somebody has time, uh, fine. Okay. Somebody has calculator, can you find it? What is the value? I just need a few people to do it. So you got the value of y, okay? It, at x equal to negative 2.5. And what is the value? We, we are going to determine. Now, what you do next is that you find the second derivative, okay? You find the second derivative. So what is y double prime? Y double prime is equal to, so we'll go back to the function. I didn't write down the function, I didn't remember. Uh, 2x plus five. So what is y double prime? Y double prime is equal to two. Two. Uh, two, the constant. Okay, so now what you do, you evaluate y double prime at x zero, which is equal to negative 2.5. Okay. And since it's constant, then it's very easy. Y double prime is equal to two. Okay, now two is positive. Okay, so what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is the function y has what? Has a relative maximum or minimum? Or minimum positive? relative. Uh, has a relative minimum. At, minimum. Uh, minimum, because positive at uh, x zero, equal to negative 2.5. And if you find the, the value of y at negative 2.5, then we say at the critical point. Now, what is the value of y at negative 2.5? Anybody found it? Negative 15.25. Negative? Fifteen point two five. Fifteen point two five. Yeah. Ah. So you know already, yeah. okay? Where is the critical point? The x is negative two point two. Uh, negative two point five. The value of y is negative fifteen point two five. So you have some idea where the location is. So in order for you to sketch the graph, uh, we put the x and the y and then you put the origin here so negative 2.5 negative 15.2 will be somewhere here 2.5 let's say 2.5 here 15 point negative 15.5 will be somewhere there so that's it that's the critical point and it's a mean what it's a minimum so minimum the curve will look like this so that is y equal to uh, tadi apa -apa? Apa -apa tadi? Now, x squared plus 5x minus 9 x squared plus 5x minus 9 so what you need is only that critical point okay so negative 2.5 negative 15.25 uh, what you get will be a minimum so therefore the curve will look like that Okay, okay. Any question about this? All right, good. I'll give you another example. Okay, let's say uh, we have the following uh, example number two. Let's say I got y equal to uh, 4x squared. Minus, minus, uh, minus, minus 20x plus, plus 51. No, actually, I want to put a minus. Okay, minus 4x plus 20x. Plus fifty one. So now 
I want you to do, okay? Uh, find, determine whether this function here correct, has a maximum or minimum, and then sketch the curve. Okay, do it now. Practice, uh, practice just to get a better, better idea of the method. Okay, all right. Uh, I give you two minutes. Baby, I don't have a student named Baby. Okay, if you are Baby, I don't think you belong to my class. So you are in the wrong class. Okay, I don't have a student named Baby. So Baby, okay, if your name is still Baby, I hope you can leave at my class. I don't have a student named Baby. Siapa lah Baby ni? Mungkin dengar dia nak letak nama Baby. Have a maximum or minimum at the critical point. Hmm. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Okay, you got it? So if you go to the question, Okay, you have a maximum or minimum? Yeah. Maximum relative, sir. Uh, relative maximum, then. Because if you if you do the... <laughs> okay, if you take the first derivative, you will get a negative 8x plus 20. So, you get the critical point. All right? So, what is the critical point? Uh, critical point, Papa? Um, X zero, Y zero equal to what? What point? Anybody tell me. Two point five. Two point five. Two point five, sir. Two point five. Seventy six. Uh, Seventy six. Oh, two point five. Bagus, pandai All right. So you have the critical point. All right. You do set it to zero. Now you do the second derivative. Okay. You do the second derivative. What we get will be what? Negative eight. Is that right? You got negative eight. Yes. Uh, yeah. Negative eight. Okay. So you evaluate the value of the y double prime. Okay. At x equal to two point five, because that is the criteria for maximum or minimum. So now, at x equal to two point five, y double prime is equal to negative eight because it's a constant. All right, and that is less than zero. So what? So the function y has a relative, or you don't have to put relative, that's fine, maximum at uh, 2.576. Okay, so you, you get a maximum. So now to sketch the graph, all right, to sketch the graph, we do the same thing. 
we know the critical point already be here. So you can imagine, you know, where is the location of the critical point? It will be somewhere up there, all right? So you you sketch the graph. You need what you need is only the x and y, and zero, 2.5, 76 will be somewhere there, up there. And that is a maximum. And you know the graph will look something like this, okay? So you can extend up to that. So that is, the function y equal to negative 4x squared plus 20x. Okay, all right, I'll give you another one. Okay, this one, I just need you to find the critical point. Okay, I'll give you another one. Uh, suppose uh, here, example three, let's say we have uh, f of x equal to, 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 15. Okay, now I want you to determine whether the function has the maximum or minimum at the critical point or the critical points and sketch the graph. So first of all, you find the critical point. Okay, so now I want you to find the first derivative and see what are the critical points. So here you will have two critical points because it is a cubic function. So therefore there will be two critical points. So I want you just to find the critical points. Okay, do it now. I'll give you one minute. Okay, Tati baby do okay, can you Put your real name and then Okay, you got it? How many critical points should be there? Should be two. Okay, what are the critical points? Okay, anybody got the critical point yet? Okay, you got the f prime of x equals what? Equal to 6x minus 24, 6x minus 24x. Betul tak? Okay. Yes. Berapa dapat critical point? What are the critical points? X zero. Saya dapat dua saja. Uh, dua, dua. That was there. Okay, for critical point. Zero and four. Uh, everybody got okay. it? Uh, F prime equal to zero. Yes, yeah. All right? Yes. So therefore, 6x squared minus 24x equal to zero. So you factor out the 6x. Okay? So you take out the 6x, and then you got x minus 4 equals zero. So here, you have, you have two critical points. So first, 6x equal to zero. That means x equal to zero. So you find the value of y, right? And then the other one for the, for the expression to be zero, x minus four should be equal to zero. Here you got x equal to four. And of course you find the value of y. So here you have two critical points. So now, you have to do, all right, you have to do the test for each. Okay, for each. That means you repeat. Uh. First, you do for x equal to zero. 
All right? And then you do for x equal to 4. So you do, you do it for the test. I mean, you do the test for each of the critical points. So if there are three critical points, that means you have to do the test for each of them. So you have to do it three times. OK? So you have to repeat the test for each of the critical points. So I want you to finish it up. OK, that is just another homework question for you. Uh, go home, finish it up. So you do the second derivative test. I mean, you do the second derivative, and then you evaluate the value of the second derivative at x equal to 0, and then see what happened to that, to the, to the f double prime at that value. And so you conclude whether you have a maximum or minimum. And then you repeat the test for x equal to 4, and then you do the conclusion. And then sketch the graph. OK? Uh, so that would, uh, that will conclude the second derivative test. Okay, any, any question? So next, okay, I'll give you a few homework questions. I would like you to do those questions. So now we do the, set, the application. So for application, we look at the book. Okay, look at the book. It's in 10 point report, 10.3. Three. I think 10.3 application. So you go to 10.3, uh, look at application. So there are, okay, there are similar application, which is revenue, cost, profit. So it's nothing new. The only new thing is you apply the second derivative test. Okay. So look at example number one. So here 10.3. Uh, example one, that is on the revenue. So if you look at the revenue, we are given the revenue function. Okay, revenue function is equal to that function. So what you want to do here is find the maximum revenue. All right, find the maximum revenue. So you apply the second derivative test. All right, so here you have a cubic function. Uh, what you do, we take the first derivative, then what you will get would be a quadratic function. And then you find the roots for the equation. But this is not as simple as the cubic function that I give you uh, earlier, you know? This one is a little bit, you have to apply the, the, the root formula. So let, let's do that. So you have, you know, R prime equal to, R prime is equal to 8,000 minus 80x minus 3x squared. So for critical point, okay, for critical point, uh, you set R prime equal to zero. So therefore, you've got 8,000. Sometimes, you know, when you, we do this thing, I, I prefer to have the, the X first. So negative 3X squared, negative 80X plus 800, 8,000 equal to zero. And you can also multiply by minus one, you know, or to the left and to the right. You will get uh, you get a positive positive three x squared. Everything. So you, you multiply by negative one. Okay, both sides. Then you have a get of that negative. Sometimes easier. So you got three x squared plus eight x minus eight thousand. Equal zero. So, bukan 80x, kasih. Huh? Bukan 80x. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 80x, 80x. Yeah, I, I, I missed that zero. So, it should be 80x. Uh, here, 80x. So, what you do here, all right, if you don't, I think the easiest way to find is how to get the roots of this equation. x equal to... Uh, for x squared, no, for function ax squared plus by plus c equal to zero. There is a formula. 
I think negative B plus or minus entah apa benda square root dia B squared minus 4 AC tak silap saya lah okay divided by 2A lah ya? uh, something like that so to confirm this one you check chapter chapter 0 ke chapter 1 okay ada dia bagi formula I think you know the formula from your high school uh, I'm not sure about this but I think if I remember correctly, not really. Okay. Uh, or you can use, when I was in school, you know, my teacher used to tell, teach me the, the cross formula. Okay, the cross formula. So you have to do that. Uh, anyhow, everything is already given. So if you forgot this thing, check the, the formula. So what you got, okay, we, we just uh, move forward. So you got, you factor that out, you got 40 minus x. The two jump. Okay, you, so you check this one. Okay, check that one. Uh, use the formula or use this formula. Uh, you will get x equal to 40. And then x equal to, what? X equal to negative 200 over 3. So one is positive value, the other is negative. Now, fortunately, our life is not as difficult as it should be. Because in application, we deal only with what? We deal only with X bigger or equal to zero. Because here we are looking at revenue. Okay, we are looking at quantity. So quantity for real life, you don't have negative quantity, right? So we deal only with x bigger equal to zero. So the independent variable, okay, we only consider uh, positive value or zero. So therefore, x equal to negative 200 over three will, will not be included or will be excluded. But if you want to do the test, that's fine, you know, just for the sake of doing the test, uh, that, that's okay, All right? Uh, but you, you don't have to. We only look at the neg positive x. Uh, yeah, I think that, that that may be a good exercise, you know? So, so you can just practice, okay? Practice the test. Go for practice, you, you do it, okay? Do the negative well x. But actually, when you do you answer application question, you don't have to, right? Because negative plus quantity not applicable. Okay. All right. So now what you do next is that you take the second derivative. So what is the R double prime? The R double prime is the derivative of the R prime. Uh, what you get will be negative. 6x, right? Negative 6x minus 80. Okay, so that would be our second derivative. So now you have to evaluate the value of the R double prime at the critical value of x. So at x equal to 40, okay? What is R double prime? Now, the R double prime is not as simple as what you have in earlier examples. It's a constant. Today, or for this example, it is not a constant. It is a, what? It is a variable, it's a function. So what you do, you substitute. So R prime is equal to what? It's equal to negative six times 40 minus 80. So you got that. A multiplication, you multiply that out. What do I get? We get negative 320. Okay, so negative 320 is less than zero, it's negative. So, what? So, what is our conclusion? So, revenue has what? Has a relative maximum. Okay, at x equal to 40. Okay, so now you have to find what is the R. 
So then what is the R at X equal to 40? So that will be our critical point. And that critical point is the maximum point. Okay. So at X equal to 40, if you look at that example, the revenue is equal to 192,000. So we just find it, determine it at X equal to 40. R is equal to substitute, okay? Substitute into the R, uh, you will get 8,000 times 40 minus 40, 40 squared minus 40 cube. And what you get is 192,000. So that is the revenue. So in other words, that is the critical point. Okay, so X zero, R zero is equal to 40, 192,000. And that critical point is the relative maximum. Okay, so in application, there is a meaning. Okay, there is a meaning to the value of the dependent variable, or which is the value of Y. All right, that means that will be the maximum value of the function. All right, okay, any question? So now you have that, and X equal to 40, the revenue is equal to 190, uh, $192,000. And that is the maximum revenue. So what you say is the following. We are going to conclude, okay? You're going to describe this. So you're going to describe that point. Okay, you can describe that point. So what you say is this. Okay, what you say is this. Uh, you can you can rephrase it, you know, wherever you like. But you want to describe it to say that at x equal to 40, the revenue is maximized. Or at x equal to 40, the revenue has a maximum or the revenue has a maximum value. Or at x equal to 40, revenue has a maximum value. Or I, I'm repeating myself. Or uh, revenue is a maximum. Okay. So we we'll, we'll say something like that. So at x equal to 40, the revenue uh, has a relative maximum. Or you can say the revenue is maximized. All right. And now you want to describe the value of the R. And the maximum revenue is equal to what? Uh, the revenue is equal to the value. The maximum revenue is $192,000. So here you are describing the critical point. And that critical point is the maximum. So you describe it in terms of what? In terms of a maximum value. So that's how you describe. Similar to what we were doing, you know, actually. You are describing that that point, and that point is the maximum point. Okay. Any any question about that? Anything? So that is revenue. And then you look at example number three. Okay. Example number three is on the cost. So what we are given is the total cost. So you look at example three you are given the total cost and you want to find how many units of output that minimize the average cost. So you don't want to find the minimum cost, you want to find the minimum average cost. So what do you do from the cost function, you get the average cost, all right? 
So if you look at example number three, that is how you do it. So you make use of the relationship. Average cost is equal to C over here, the quantity. And that will be equal to what? Well, it will be equal to one over four X squared. That is the cost function plus four X plus 100, everything you divide by X. Okay, so what is it equal to? That will be equal to one over four X plus four plus 100 over X. Now 100 over X is 100 X to the power of negative one. Okay, so here you have 100 over x, the, the last term, that is equal to 100 x to the power of negative 1. So that's how you got that term. All right, so that is the average cost. So now you have average cost, you differentiate. Okay, get the first derivative, and then get the second derivative, and then we conclude. Okay, all right. So... We just go go through the example. So you are given the average cost. You find the the second uh, no, the first derivative of the cost function. So nothing difficult here. So AC prime is equal to what? You take derivative of the first term. You got one over four x. That will be one over four. The second term is the constant. That will be constant. The third term, you got 100, okay, x to the power of minus one, okay? So you differentiate this term here. What do I get? I get negative, not negative, you keep positive first. You get uh, negative one, okay, multiplied by 100. And then x, you reduce by one, that becomes what? Negative two. So make sure we do this before you just come up with the, you know, you bring the x to the, to, to the bottom. And that will be equal to one over four minus 100x over x squared. Or you can, you can keep up the x to the power, uh, to the power of negative two, it's okay too. And then for critical point, all right, the AC prime is equal to zero. For critical point, AC prime equal to zero. What do I get? I get uh, one over four minus 100 X squared equal to zero. So 100 X squared equal to one over four. So X squared equal to 400 okay so x squared equal to 400 you take the square square become the square root so x is equal to the square root or 400 to the power of half okay so on the square root or you can write the square root of 400 Okay, you take the square root of 100, what do you get? We get what? We get 20. 20. Uh, 20 and negative 20. All right, because the square root of 100 can be either positive or negative 20. So either you write much like me or you write like that. Okay? Uh, so you have negative 20 and 20. So you can put that this negative is not relevant. So that is excluded. Okay. Since x is less than zero, I'm sorry. x less than zero is not relevant. Okay. For application. But if you want to do the test, that's fine. You can do it. So now we only look at x equal to 20. Okay. So I want you to finish it up. Of course, everything is given there. Eh? But the, the, the they, they skip a little bit, okay? I want you to show every step, okay? So what I would like you to do 
you finish up the second derivative test. Okay, so you take AC double prime and compute the value because the book didn't compute the value. All right, because they assume that this already positive. Lah. Okay, but we should compute the value and then conclude. So you make our you make the conclusion and describe. Okay, describe as per the first example that I was looking at. Okay, all right. Okay, now we look at profit. Okay. Oh, I don't think we can go to the next topic. Profit pun belum kabur lagi. Okay, any any question? Anything? Okay, profit. We look at the profit in example number five, example number six. Okay, example number six. Kita go to senang dulu. All right, the one that is easier is the competitive profit. Okay, so we go to example number six, the competitive market profit. So I want you to read that 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 question. Okay, the the question that in the example, what is the revenue? What is the cost? And then what do you want to find? So read that question, please. Okay, process more. Taraweh kena ada. In your in your kampung or in your place, uh, do the mosque has to close at 10 o'clock or is it uh, in certain state? Semua kan? I think, I think semua pukul 10 kena tutup kan? Macam uh, dekat Selangor, but they, they they make they make twenty rakaat, but you still have to finish by ten. In in Pahang, they finish by ten, but many mosques or surau they they make only eight. So you know you you have time, you don't have to rush. Uh, but some mosques they finish at ten, they do twenty. So laju sikit. Eh? Okay, you got that example? So here you want to find how many units of the X to be sold to maximize profit. And what is the maximum profit? So that is uh, the question. So in other words, you want to find what? You want to find the maximum point. And then you find the maximum value of the profit. So remember the profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So how do you get revenue? You are given the price, okay? So you know revenue is equal to Px, and given uh, the price is equal to 200, revenue is equal to 200x. So that is perfect competition. And then for the cost, okay, find cost. So what are we given? You are given the average cost. Okay, given average cost equal to what? Equal to 80 plus X. So you are given average cost, how do you find cost? Therefore, cost is equal to that. Cost is equal to average cost multiplied by the quantity, and that is equal to 80 plus X multiplied by X. So you got 80 X plus x squared okay so that is the cost that's revenue so our profit is equal to what is equal to 200x minus everything here 80x plus x squared okay and then of course you break out the bracket you will get what 100 and 20x minus x squared. 
So that is our profit function. It's a quadratic function. So just do the second derivative test. So what you do first is get the P prime. And what is P prime? P prime is 120 minus 2x. So you set P prime equal to zero for critical point. Okay. Therefore, 120 minus 2x equal to zero. What is x? Uh, x is equal to 120 over 2. That is 60. So that is the, the quantity that gives you the maximum profit. Or that is the critical value of x. OK? So if you want, you can call it x zero. So that is the critical value of x. So of course you need to find uh, p zero. Okay. So you find p at x equal to sixty. So you got the critical point. Or you can find p later. That's fine. Uh, number two, you take the second derivative. P double prime is equal to negative two. All right, and that is a constant, so easy. So what you do now at x equal to 60, you evaluate the p double prime and see it's a constant that is equal to negative two, less than zero, so what? So profit is maximized at x equal to 60. So now, you, you get the value of p at x equal to 60. All right. So at x equal to 60, if you already have got it there, then you just describe it. Okay. At x equal to 60, p is equal to whatever the value is. Okay. Good. Uh, substitution by substitution. Now, if you do the substitution, what do I get? You will get the profit equal to weapon. The revenue per unit is 200. That is the price. And then P double prime. Uh, OK, so it doesn't find. OK, that question did not give you the maximum revenue. So can you determine the maximum revenue? So that's good, you know? Uh, they didn't finish up with the maximum revenue. So we, we need to find. So you substitute x equal to 60 into the revenue function. Okay, what do you get? Dalam buku ni dia buat. Okay, anybody? Can I do it? You substitute into the profit function now. You can substitute into the revenue. Uh, profit function, this one. Senang aja nak cari ni. Okay, cepat. Anybody who get it, let me know. Tahu sini. 1,600. Berapa? 3,600. 3, uh, 3,600. Everybody got it? So substitute yes, down to the profit. OK? Yes, so you got 3,600. So that is the maximum profit. So our conclusion will be to maximize profit, all right, to maximize profit, what do we do? We have to sell 60 units of the good. And what is the good? It doesn't matter. It doesn't say what is it, just unit. 60 units of the good of the product and the maximum profit is equal to what? Equal to 64,000. No, $6,400. But there is $64,400. Ah, three, $3,600. I'm sorry. Uh, $3,600. Uh, okay, 
So that's how you describe. All right. So you have to describe the point. All right. Of course, you already got the the the, the critical point, and that critical point is a maximum point. We know that. Uh, but you have to describe it from the perspective of the apply application. So if it is profit, you just describe. If it is revenue, you, you describe that point. So in other words, what you are describing is you are describing what? We are describing the critical point. In terms of the independent value, or no, the independent variable and the dependent variable. Prepare a critical point, which can be a maximum, it can be a minimum. Okay, so you describe it as that. All right, okay, any question? Okay, now we move on to example number five. Example number five, you have a monopoly market. Same thing. The only difference would be what? Would be the revenue function. So the revenue function would be the, the demand function. You multiply by the quantity, then we will get the revenue. So again here, you have to find the profit. So uh, example five, you know the profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So first one, you need to find the revenue, okay? And revenue is equal to Px. So what are we given? You are given the price equal to 168 minus 0.2x, okay? So therefore, revenue is equal to 168 minus 0.2x multiplied by x, so you, what you get is a quadratic function. 168x minus 0.2x squared. So that is our profit, oh no, our revenue. Next, you have to find cost. And you are given, what? You are given average cost. If you are given cost, then no problem, okay? But you are given average cost. So cost is equal to the average cost multiplied by x, okay? And that will be equal to, you are given the average cost 120 minus plus x multiplied by x. So what do we get? We get 120x plus x squared. So your profit, all right, will be equal to 168x minus 0.2x squared minus everything, okay? The cost, 120x plus x squared. You break out the bracket, okay? Then what do we get? You will get 48x minus 1.2, 1.2x squared. So here you got it become negative, okay? Here negative, negative. So 168 minus 20, you got 48, 0 0.2, negative 0 0.2 minus one, so 1 1.2 X squared. So that's what you get, okay? So now I want you to finish it up. Now everything is, of course, it's already being done in the book, okay? But the book uh, skip a few steps because they just want to show the conclusion. What I want you to do, I want you to find everything, okay? Determine everything, show the value. You get the second derivative, evaluate, get the value, and then conclude. Okay, all right. And then uh, you get the critical point, and then you find the, I mean, you apply the second derivative test, and then you describe. Okay, describe that critical point. All right? All right. So we are done. So that is 10.3. Uh, I give you already the questions on. Question 10.3. Did I give you question 10.3? Yeah, application 10.3 belum bagi. So 10.3, I give you a few questions. Uh, do number 10.3, do number number five, number six, 
that is the revenue. Five and six revenue. So you, you can do only one of them. All right. And then uh, what trend maximize of the revenue? So again, number 10 is revenue. So do, do two of them. Okay. And then the second part would be the cost. So you do 16, 17. That will be the average cost. And then the last part will be on the profit. So you can do, you know, number 26, 27. And then, okay. Okay, number 26, 27, 30, 36. And you can also try number 35. Okay. And then number 38. Okay, 38. That is the monopoly. And then, ah, uh, to call it Okay, you can try number 43. Oh, lagi satu, 43. Oh, itu banyak tu. Tapi tak banyak buat semua. Okay? Buat macam revenue tu, you don't have to do all, you know, you do until you feel comfortable. So 10.3, I will just write down 5, 6, 10, 16, 17. 26, 27, 35, 36, 35, 36, you can do only one of them. And then 38, 43. 38, 43, you need to do both, okay? This one you have to do both, but others, you, you, you may skip uh, some of them. Okay, all right. So that will do it for the chapter nine and 10. Okay, so 10.5, you don't have to do it because it's more of a rational function which we don't deal with. Okay, so for this chapter number 10, we do only 10.1 up to 10.3. So most important will be the second derivative test. So make sure we know that. And of course, you know, uh, chapter number nine, you have the first derivative test. Okay. First derivative test is a good, good concept, you know, good understanding of the concept of maximum minimum. So once we understand the first derivative test, then to make sense of the second derivative test is more straightforward. All right? Okay. So, oh, any question? Anything? Okay. So, I have a few more minutes. I have 10 more minutes. So, we move on to the next topic. Other. Kita take a break, one minute. One minute break. Bulan puasa ni, kena take break, one minute. Kuat juga bunyi benda tu. Ah. So, get ready for the next topic. Next topic ni, on partial derivative. Okay, partial derivative, chapter berapa eh? I think a quadratic function though, to find the roots. I think the chapter, chapter one now. I think it's in chapter number 
Partial derivative. Okay. Now, situation where the function okay the function consists of two or more independent variables uh, all right so next topic is on the partial derivative So here you have a function y. They have more than one independent variables. So you have x1, x2, x3, up to xn, where n okay, is an integer. So you have, uh, oh, this is a general form, OK? That's the general form for the, uh, what do you call it? For function with two or more independent variables, uh, then you will have the function will be like this, all right? Uh, so to satisfy the condition, n must be bigger or equal to two. So example, uh, you have, y equal to f of x1, x2, x3. So here you have three independent variables, right? Three independent variables, which is, or which are x1, x2, x3. Okay, and of course one dependent variable. Uh, the one that we already has considered, or we already know, is y equal to f of x1, all right? So if there are only one independent variable, we just write it y as a function of x. So this one we know. So here you have more than two independent variables. So uh, to do the derivative, you do the partial derivative. So for us, okay, for us, we only consider two independent variables, which is, if you go by the general form, will be x1 and x2. Okay, now since there are only two independent variables, normally you don't write x1 and x2. Of course, you can do it. 
right? But we use another notation. Z equal to function of X and Y. So here, the Y become the independent variable with X. The dependent variable will be Z. So if you relate back to the general form, the X1 will be X, X2 will be Y, okay? The Y now Z, since there are only three variables, okay? So normally, if you go to the chapter number, number 14, the notation will be Z equal to a function of X and Y. Okay, all right. So how does the graph look like? So if you look at this thing here, there are three variables. So the graph will be three dimension. So you have the graph will be three dimensional graph. So you have a three dimensional graph, three dimension. No, three dimensional graph, three dimension. Uh, if you have y equal to function of x, this is two dimension. Okay, two dimension meaning you have y and x. Y the independent variable, dependent variable. X is the dependent. Oh no, x is the independent variable. Y is the dependent variable. Okay, but now you have three dimensional. Uh, you have two independent variables, x and y. That means you have a three dimensional graph. So how does the graph look like? So now, all right. Now, X and Y will be the independent variables. Z is the dependent. So how does the Z come into the graph? If I start from here, okay, I start from here, the Z to begin mana? Mana macam mana nak draw Z? Kita tak boleh draw, okay, tak boleh draw. The Z will be what? Will, will come out from my, my screen here. Start dekat sini, okay? The Z will come out, will come out toward you. And then it also go down, go down to the other side. Can you imagine now? Can you imagine that? Now everything is at 90 degrees, okay? So here 90 degrees, this 90 degrees. So the Z axis that come out will also be 90 degrees up. So 90 degrees up. And 90 degrees down. It's like what? It's like uh, you know, it's like the like a building, okay? Like a building that coming out from the earth. So that is the Z, Z coming out. Okay. So if you imagine the line, all right, you imagine the line, this X and Y is or X and Y are the lines exist on the on earth, on the ground. The Z will be what? The Z will be the line coming out to the sky and going down through the earth, okay? So you will get three-dimensional object. So from there, what you get, you get object. You don't get a line, you get object. Like, uh, like, like what? Give me one example of a three-dimensional object. Hello? Cube. Uh, cube, okay. Any object, cube, cubic, it's a sphere, or human, okay? Anything on earth, all right? Is three dimension. So human, a house, everything, car, okay? Three, uh, all these are three dimensional objects, all right? And more, more formal, okay? More definite shape are the cube, cubic, uh, cube, cuboid, okay, cubic, cuboid, cuboid. And then steel, cylinder, okay, things like that. So you got three. Now it's difficult to draw three-dimensional object or three-dimensional graph on on a two-dimensional space uh, uh, surface. So what we do is you look at the book in Figure fourteen point one. Okay, fourteen point one. That's how you draw it. So you make the adjustment. Okay, you make the adjustment. We go back to what I have here. The X and Y is on the ground. Okay, the Z will come out to the sky and going down the earth. 
All right, so that is the third axis. So in order to show that Z, what you do, you rotate the, the graph, then it will become like this. You have the X will going like that. Going here, X. And then the Y will go like this. So this is 90 degrees, eh? okay, 90 degrees. And the Z will come up. Like that. So X and Y go underground. Z is going up and underground. Okay. Now the one that we can see, okay, the one that we can see, imagine this is a wall, okay? Imagine this is a wall. So the one that you can see is the one that is positive in value. Okay. So the positive X would be from this is origin. This is the wall. Okay. So the positive X is the one that come out. So here you got the positive value. The other side is the negative value. So negative value you denote by broken line. That is the other side. Okay. Now similarly for the Y, the Y that is that you can see, okay, would be what? Will be the positive. The one that you cannot see, I mean, beside uh, the other side of the wall, that will be what? Uh, that will be negative. So we show it by the broken line. So this is negative. Negative y. Similarly for z, the one that go up to the sky, that's positive. The one that go down to the earth. Inside the earth, you cannot see that's negative. Okay, so that is our negative. So for more information, you look at figure 14.1. So that's negative. So the first quadrant, okay, the first quadrant will be the positive x, positive y, positive x. That is the one that we are looking at now. You know, and then the negative side. Imagine that is something that you cannot see it's blocked by the wall. Okay, the wall meaning that that going up. Well, yeah. so that's how you look at the graph. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here, and then I will continue with the graph uh, next class. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so. I will see you again on Wednesday. So Wednesday, if you want to miss the class, uh, please don't miss the class on Wednesday. Because Wednesday, I'm going to give you, you know, the rules, how to differentiate the uh, this kind of function. So it's very important. So if you want to miss, you know, you can miss a class. At least after this, you know, you shouldn't miss any classes. Uh, everything will be more important. Uh. All right. Okay. I'll see you again. Any any question? Any comment? Okay. Good. So I'll see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Waalaikum salam. Salam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.